Now, I mentioned that I was going to mount the jack, and I had no idea that I got something that bolted together. I didn't even look. I just wanted something with a wheel, so I guess that wasn't too difficult to do. I can slide it around wherever I want, so, um, you know, I wanted to mention one good thing about this style of an A-frame hitch is that it's pre-made for one of the jacks that, that, that go straight down into that hole and it's uh, the bolt patterns correct to accept one of those um, so I could always put one of those on uh, they're a little bit more expensive but they're also a lot better um, but I like these that flip up because I just have to drop it onto the ball hitch and you know raise it up just a little bit and then I can go ahead and flip it up I'm, I've had them I've had this style where it just seems like you're cranking forever and when it's cold 20 below zero and you're and you're doing it I mean it's not a big deal but it just it's a, it's a pain so um, well uh, we're pretty much winding down here now I have everything made as far as framework goes and I've got a lot of welding to do um, so I'm gonna weld the uh, sides get all that stuff welded and then I'm gonna drop my floor in and that is self-explanatory I mean you cut it to fit and I can talk about when it when it's in you know how, how much I'd stitch weld it um, it's certainly not gonna be welded solid but I'll put a bunch of little stitches all over the place because the more stitch welding you do the less the less banging and clanging you hear behind you so um, hopefully we'll be done here shortly um, and then comes the worst part for me anyway which is paint I uh, not looking forward to painting but I guess it it goes with everything so okay guys I just put the steel in the floor and I got it all welded down and I was just gonna give you an idea of how to how much welding I put down and uh, you can see I just stitched it uh, I did about you know two inches every every foot and that is plenty I mean we're not talking about anything really for strength here it's just but the, it, it ties everything together and uh, here here's one thing I wanted to show you um, you can see right from the top um, you see those little stitch marks right there and there that's my hitch um, that I welded from underneath and you can see that I got good penetration because it really marked up the steel from the top side and that is something to look for if you're doing welding and you're welding on sheet metal especially and you don't see that that means your welds aren't very good <laughs> Uh, you, you definitely should should be able to see that now you can see it in different areas around here where I've you know welded it on this is a cross member here and uh, you know you can see them you should be able to see that kind of stuff because that tells you you're getting good penetration um, I use 10 gauge sheet metal on here but that is plenty heavy duty for this kind of a trailer the only reason I used it instead of uh, 12 gauge or even maybe 14 gauge is because I got a heck of a deal on it and it was actually cheaper to buy this from a friend of mine than it would be to order new stuff so I used it. Um, anyhow obviously we'll go over some more stuff I mean you, you, a lot of guys are going to put wood, plywood, um, you know expanded metal things like that so okay here's another view um, of underneath the trailer just to give an idea of the cross members now um, I went ahead and, you know I just I put a stitch there I put a stitch here and then on the back side I put a couple of them in the middle I know it might be kinda hard to see but uh, basically I have four stitches uh, about three inches long on each each cross member so um, I guess 
you know, the more the merrier. Like I say, I like to overbuild stuff. Um, but I'd, I'd say that's probably, that, that would be about a minimum that you'd want to do if you're putting sheet metal on. Because it, it's just, it, it ties everything together nicely. This, the trailer's stronger because of it. Um, it's just, uh, and, and it also, it'll be a lot less rattling going down the road. You won't have metal slapping against metal. That can be annoying. So uh, it's worth the time if you're doing it. Do it before you paint it. Well, the worst part, in my opinion, is over with the painting. Um, I actually started getting ready to mount my welder in and everything before I realized I forgot to shoot a video of the finished product. So, um, here we go. There's mounted the safety chains. Um, again, I don't know what's all legal for every state. I know in Minnesota the DMV likes you, you, you gotta have those safety chains that you can hook up to your vehicle and uh, I, I can't possibly know what states have what laws and I, I just don't even want to venture to guess. The only thing I can say is check with the, G, with the DMV or Google Google it or something and find out. Um, and we definitely want to be legal. I'm not advocating not being legal. But uh, and so, so, some trailers also require a side marker light that would be mounted up front here in the front corners. Um, to be honest, I don't even know if that's has to be done in, in Minnesota or not but um, I can always put those on and add it into the wiring that I've already done so um, yeah I guess we're wrapping this thing up I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you got something out of it um, you can always you can always get a hold of me by email if you have any other questions or um, visit my website. I plan on keep updating it as we make changes or as we decide to do more designs or what have you. So I guess we're done for this trailer. Thank you for watching.